Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Lebanon Board of Park Commissioners. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and please let the records indicate that all members are present. If everyone's had a chance to review the minutes from the January meeting, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes from the January meeting. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carry. Is there any old business to come before the board? John, do you have any old business? No old business. No old business? No old business. Okay. Old old business. Old business like old business. <laughs> okay, new business. Uh, first on the agenda is Casey Sampson. Colonial Market Days at Abner Longley Park. Sorry. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm going to get some uh, visuals set up here for you. I'm going to attempt to, I should say. I don't even need my headphones. I hear them. Yeah. For, for working here. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, sorry for the delay. Again, my name is Casey. I'm with uh, Colonial Market Days. We were here last year uh, presented to you. So we're going to give you a recap of what uh, happened last year and uh, come up with a request for this year as well. So <coughs> this year's event we're planning on being on June 13th and 14th. And we're going to see if we can get this uh, screen to work. Yeah, they are, I think just a second, they said. Well, I'm not a good singer, so I can't entertain <laughs> you here. Uh, but just to kind of, here. oh, there we go, perfect. So uh, we're hoping that this uh, year's event will be on the June 13th and 14th. That uh, is like last year, the second uh, full weekend of June, and that's easy to advertise and market that. So if you're not, uh, if, you, if you're new to the board or, or can't remember, uh, we're a designated educational nonprofit, and uh, kind of our mission statement here is that to educate the community and surrounding area on 18th century history re uh, regarding the French and Indian War through the American Revolution. So uh, in this area of the world, we see a lot of 19th century, uh, just like Lebanon, 1832, Indiana, 1816. That's all 19th century, and so we're trying to bring in a little bit of early, earlier history. <coughs> there was 18th century here in, in Indiana. It's 1717 up in Fort Wayne uh, and Vincennes. There's a lot of interesting history. So to kind of give you some numbers from 2019, uh, we had 183 registered reenactors. Now we probably had a little more than that uh, that just walked through, that just walked, you know, walked on. Now, not, uh, of that 183, that includes, you know, men, women, and children. Those aren't the ones that participated in a battle. It's just a, those are all the event uh, participants. We had a combination of 10 different military units uh, and had 12 merchants. Something we're pretty excited about, we sold 351 family tickets. So that could be a family of three or a family of six. Uh, so that was uh, an exciting thing for our community. Uh, we did advertise this pretty heavily. We had four digital bill billboards throughout the state. And we even had one uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. So it was cheap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and something we were proud about is we did have three horses there this past year. And I don't know why I did that. So we're gonna go back possibly. <laughs> Doesn't like our presentation tonight. What you're kind of seeing here is a bird's eye view. Let's see if it'll, there it goes. Uh, this is a bird's eye view of the event. And um, so this is where we had our merchants in this area here. <coughs> and then there was a couple sporadic underneath the trees. These were all of our participants. And what you can't see, which makes this just a more amazing sight for us, uh, is all these camps that were through the trees here, and, and they, the, the campers really enjoyed that. And if you notice right here, this was the entertainment of the weekend. There, we had a tree that fell down. And so I'm, I'm gonna ask John if he can, see if we can facilitate that again this year. That was the highlight of the event. That was but scary. Those kids just loved it all. It, luckily it was well away from everybody, but um, oh once, once it was down, those kids just climbed on. We got some awesome pictures to show you. <laughs> so uh, we, we spent, we did a lot of uh, upkeep on the, on the grounds throughout the weekend. We spent, uh, 
special attention to the grounds. We know that it was really wet that weekend, actually that whole spring. Uh, we were laughing because they said well, that at the meeting tonight we had, we said that the splash pad will be there this year and open. Hopefully that will drag draw in more public uh, then, but we said you know what the whole park was a splash pad last year so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make do uh, limited vehicles during tear down and set up again trying to protect our grounds and uh, we're 2020 we're looking to use the same space uh, one thing that we did want to ask about was drainage um, on that field and, and I just I guess want to bring that up to the, the board's uh, attention if you're not already and that is something that as we grow we are concerned about uh, I've talked to John one-on-one -on -one with it. Um, not that <clears throat> what we have to say is rule, but uh, that is something that we could really expand upon and using that field, what used to be the old LISA field. Um, but because our growth is imminent, we're, we're already seeing more registered units and participants than we did last year. Uh, and we are going to be trying to come up with different ways that we can park as well. But uh, one thing we are really happy with on Sunday morning when we made the decision to go ahead and cancel, uh, we safely evacuated all of the reenactors that were there and in doing so created as little, if any, damage at all. Uh, we were very conscious about how we did it. We did it in waves and we knew that come three o'clock we were going to have a downpour and our event was supposed to close at four, which means people will be tearing down between four and five and we were really worried about the ground. So we made the decision to go ahead and pull the plug Sunday morning and in doing so saved the site, saved everybody a headache. We didn't have to call tow trucks. It was a good deal. So let me give you some quick flashes. This is what you, you've seen out here uh, if you <coughs> participated. But if you didn't, then we'll give you a couple of pictures. And these are from people from all over the country, all over the region. And there's some locals in here as well. And uh, this is one kind of a neat project. This was a local, semi-local Boy Scout in Sheridan. Uh, and and they, they do this a lot of different events. They set up their own tent, their own food, and uh, it's a fundraiser for them. So again, community project as well. And it's very educational. All these are out here for the public to pick up, look at, feel, touch, be a part of that history. And there's the tree. <laughs> <laughs> so. What we are encompassing here too is a couple different time periods as well as different eras. So obviously this, this uh, gentleman here is interpreting a, a small native boy uh, <laughs> playing with the, the, what would be known as the white children. So it's a, just, it's a very diverse crowd too that we have uh, and uh, we're excited to show that history. Uh, so again the 2020 event we're putting on the map, we've got 5,000 postcards that went out. Uh, have Lebanon, Abner, Longley Park plastered right there. It's really hard to see. Uh, but I promise it does say that. And um, putting, again, attention to Lebanon. And we're advertising this nationally in three different publications. And we have had a great support with the Lebanon Reporter. Uh, in fact, we had an event right here in this room uh, talking about her, this story and uh, bringing that history back home. So again, uh, those are the dates. June 13th and 14th is what we're hoping for, utilizing the same space. Uh, we're not asking for anything extra or special this year. We'd just like to repeat the same quest we did last year. To order some sunshine. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, we, funny, we, we talked to a couple meteorologists to see if we could order that, and they said it's just not in the cards. So. No promises, right? Casey, what's the difference? I don't know the difference between the one that you're doing and then obviously the one at the park. What's, what's the difference between the two? Is there a difference? A hundred years um, okay. in, in layman's terms. It, it's fairly simple. Just a different, uh, different time period. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. There's a civil war. Ours is American Revolution. Okay. And um, they each have their own amazing benefits. <laughs> one thing that we have is we have a, uh, a lot more entertainers that are, we call them entertainers, but they're actually educators. Um, so like the woman that was uh, dressed there on the few slides back, you know, when she came in and did her story here, um, she did the rest of the story out at the park. And, and there's seven other individuals that have that same type of story. And something that we're really excited about this year, we're going to have, we'll, we'll be the second event that they've ever done this at, is uh, there's a group coming in and they're doing a, an interactive scavenger hunt and history lesson throughout the weekend with kids and, and so they actually have to go and talk to the participants 
and then they'll give them a clue on who to talk to next. So it's, it's not <coughs> go to this checkpoint. You have, they actually have to talk and, and, and look for keywords, and I can't give away all the answers, but uh, <laughs> it'll be a really fun event, uh, having that extra education. Any questions? I, I just want to say, let me address some of those things. Uh, the signage, I think that was an issue too. We have signage down there. I still think we need to work on entrance and uh, you know access anyway and getting out of there. Um, <coughs> the tree, sorry about that. <laughs> no, don't that happens, that. yeah. That's great. Uh, we do try and do our best down there. We've removed a few, but uh, yeah, that was a healthy tree. So it's just one of those things. Like you said, we had a lot of water. The drainage issue, we just got our uh, topography and our drainage plan, so that is something that we're planning on tackling. Um, I don't know if that's going to be right away, but there's a main drain that goes through the park, and we're planning on uh, that area of the park you saw was so soggy. Um, so we will be addressing that. Um, your, your footprint damage, there was nothing. I think we had one incident where there was a horse that got out of the, uh, we don't have symphony, I don't believe, this year. Uh, they haven't come before, uh, before us yet, so we might not have to worry about that. Are you going to have just uh, three horses or more? Uh, we don't expect to have many. There, there may be an ad one additional, um, but... Um, I, I thought it was great. No, I, I just wanted, that was our first event with horses, and the footprint was, <laughs> footprint, or the horse hoofprint, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was really, uh, so I, I was really pleased. Uh, Casey did a great job uh, of communicating, too. Um, couldn't ask for any better communication, and he was very uh, uh, caring about the park, and, and just pleased us very well. thought it was a great event. Unfortunately... Wow. I'm Sunday was bad. About there was one situation with the horse. Yeah, he, he got in the symphony at sunset. Uh, Casey had it all roped off and everything, and the guy just didn't follow directions. And <laughs> Casey, Casey saw me there, and Casey went over and spoke to him. And never happened again. He, so there was a. It was just he, he, got, he got out. Of, he got an. It was an anxious horse. Or Larry knows more about horses than I do. He, the guy, the guy was hyper, and he wouldn't calm down. So. Casey took it upon himself to get the horse out of the area so he wouldn't hurt any of the patrons. So I, I really appreciated him being on top of that too. But on the process, he was walking across the park and that wasn't a good idea. And we'll work those, those little things out. But for a first time event, I was just really pleased with everything. But we are working on several things, entrance and exit. Uh, parking you and I can discuss that. As I said, Casey's a great communicator and did just an outstanding job. I, I would give my five star two thumbs up uh, as far as my two cents. I like it. Well, do we need a motion? I make a motion that we approve the Colonial Market Days for June 13th and 14th, 2020. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. We'll yeah. look forward to seeing you guys all And after. be sure to let us know prior. We have that new pretty sign, and we want to put advertising for that event. So okay. I appreciate uh, June's it. June's great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank sure. you guys very much. Thank Have you, evening. Casey. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Next on the agenda, we have Eagle Scout Anson Sperry. To tell us about a project at the trailhead. Yes. Do you have a PowerPoint? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a He's got one too. And thank all the guests for getting out tonight. Pretty sloppy yes, out there. Yes. And appreciating all the park board, all present. Thank you. It's uh, everybody be safe going home. with Anson and his uh, father a couple weeks ago and um, he's talking about the trailhead he has a project to help him earn earn some points to, towards his eagle badge there and uh, he has handouts and there you go They're a really nice young man trying to recruit him as a lifeguard too by the way which getting there he's gonna he's gonna do it I tell you <laughs> you just don't know it yet Anson <laughs> 
this is my Eagle Scout project proposal. Okay, talk, pull that microscope, uh, microscope. <laughs> <laughs> microphone towards you a little bit. Yeah. So we can hear you. Yeah. Get your sister yelling voice out. There you go. <laughs> okay. I am Anson Sperry. I am 14 years old and turning 15 this month. I'm a freshman at Lebanon High School. I'm a Life Scout and I am part of Troop 359. I have been a Tiger Cub, or I've been in Boy Scout since I was a Tiger Cub in 2000, since 2010. I've been on a bike team for three years. The name of my bike team is Midwest Devo and I do many disciplines such as road, cycle cross, mountain bike, and track. What I propose to do is add a bike repair stand at the Menard Trailhead. I also propose to add dog way stations at the Menards and Hazel Rig Trailhead. I also plan on adding a bike repair station in Thorntown. Here's a graphic showing the two locations of where the bike repair stand and dog waste stations would be located at. A bike repair stand is a stand that you can put your bike upon to make adjustments to your bike. There are multiple tools on the bike repair stand. The tools are tire levers, screwdrivers, allen wrenches, and open-ended wrenches. These tools are secured by a braided steel wire. This is the bike pump that goes along with the bike repair stand. It has Presta and Schrader valve compatibility so that it will work with any type of tires. It's weatherproof, so it'll work from negative 30 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the dog waste station. It holds 1,000 bags. It is made with aluminum to help withstand the elements, and it has a waste collection basket on it so that people can dispose of their dog waste. Here are other communities' bike stations. Uh, that one is the Monon Trails and the Big Four Trail at Whitestown, so this would give you a general idea of what it would look like when completed. So the cost of the bike repair stand is $789.25. The cost of the bike pump is $702. The cost of the dog waste station is $277 each. The overall cost, when you add in things like wood and concrete, would be $2,385.60. So that's a lot of money. So how do I plan on fundraising for that? I plan on holding a bike ro walk run event along the Big Four Trail, and then also asking for donations from local companies. Yes. I just have to comment that as a user of the trails, I think your ideas are excellent. And especially, um, obviously, the, the dog waste is an obvious one for everyone. But the bike one, that would be a real That's, nice convenience. Yeah. Uh, some people just forget or don't realize they need to carry those kind of things yep. in their pouch on their bike, mm -hmm. yeah, especially if they're not maybe frequent yeah. riders or whatever. Um, I was trying to look at the picture you had. Did the tools clip off or something? So they're, uh, they're a, uh, retractable, so they'll oh, retract excellent. into it. Okay, very good. So uh, do you know anything about you know vandalism possibilities? <coughs> Obviously, uh, what you describe is trying to uh, prevent that, but as far as communities that have had them, have there been issues with that? Uh, I don't really know much about it. Uh, the lady in Thorntown was also worried about vandalism, so, I mean, they're on the Monons, and they haven't been really, doesn't appear to have been vandalized, so I don't. A good sign. Yeah. And White's Towns is fairly new. I yeah, mean, they just put theirs in. So, yeah. can you go back to the screen where it shows the difference in the price? Uh, for can you get back to that screen? 
Uh, Unfortunately, my eyes are not real good, so yeah. I cannot read the, this. Which price would you like? Pricing. The yeah, the the total price of the twenty three eight. Yeah, there you go, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just was wondering what the breakdown was of the different. What's the remesh? Is that for the? Uh, for the concrete. So you like uh, put it in the concrete. It's more of a stabilizer yeah. type. Are, are you, or is he looking more of a approval for him to be able to do this? Is this, what's the? I I ask Anson to come before you because obviously this is something going to be installed permanently at the parks and. Uh, the things that we discussed, Anson is going to have some sweat equity in the project rather than just a PowerPoint and picking these items out. Um, he's going to help us form up the concrete, dig out the hole, you know, uh, form the boards and pour the concrete and finish. Um, obviously, we all know on a lot of these projects, Dad's going to be there too, but no, obviously, he'll work with the Parks Department. Um, I, I think it's a great uh, 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 part to our parks department. I think the uh, the dog stations worry me a little bit because uh, I can't put enough barrels out there, and I, I'm afraid they'll be tying them to the trees like they have in the past. I told them I wasn't too sure about the dog station. I agree. There's there is dog waste out there. I think these uh, bike stations are outstanding, though. Whitestown hadn't had any vandalism, to my knowledge. Monon has not had any damage, but. Uh, yeah, Anson's willing to put in sweat equity on this. He's going to raise his own money. I think that's great. Uh, suggestion to you, I might be able to purchase some of these items through the Parks Department if the Park Board allows uh, you, know, yeah. you to go forward and go there. The other concern I had is Hazel Rig. We don't have any cameras out there. We do have cameras at our trailhead. Uh, that's the only other concern I'd have is putting it out there, uh, and there isn't anything out there, uh, you know, uh, any cameras, and I don't foresee any cameras going out there soon. We are looking at call uh, uh, public surface buttons where you can call and putting those there. We're looking for monies now. Um, that will probably be the uh, on down the road also. We'll try and do parts of it in 2020, but probably be a year or two off from that. I've seen um, a different version of the dog waste station where <clears throat> they don't necessarily have the um, containers to place them in there, that the owner actually takes the bag with them. Yeah. But instead it's just a dispenser for yeah. the, um, the plastic bags. Right. You know? It, and now we have them around our parks. We just did that in the last couple of years. Uh, obviously, it's near high school, so a lot of people are uh, we're replacing those bags a lot, and you'll find them throughout the parks, you know, where they'll scatter them. Hopefully, I think trail users, and, and you're more of a bike guy than I am, do you see that much vandalism or trash out there? Normally, bikers are pretty good about yeah, picking typically. up after themselves. So, in Hazel Rig, that's, that's your decision. Angie Moody, obviously, uh, she's the parks director at uh, uh, Thorntown. Uh, her resources aren't very good, so I think you're helping her with that project, too. I think uh, she'd be on board with it, though, as long as you do the sweat equity and the monies and all that. So, um, it, obviously, to earn his eagle, he's done a lot of work and background on this, but I think a uh, little sweat equity is always good for a project, too. It is going to be a permanent fixture. Uh, we do have cameras, like I said. We're looking at painting underneath the bridge, some nice uh, mural under there. So. Uh, I, you know, and we're looking at uh, with the monies coming in. Hopefully, we'll have pavement going from Thorntown all the way, so the usage will get uh, used a lot more. You know I, how far typically the bike stations are placed in between? I mean, as far as uh, it really depends on the trail and how nice a trail it is. With uh, the Monon, it really like some parts near Carmel, you'll have one every three miles or so, but then. When you get into the Sheridan part, there's only one of them, so. How far have you traveled, just out of curiosity? On the Monon? Yeah. Uh, I went all the way to the downtown and then back. There you go. 
He was at the bike meeting the other night too. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, yeah. About your He's an enthusiast. It's great. It's and great. Is the park in charge of uh, like making sure that maintaining? Yeah. yeah. The waste station's empty. Yeah, and and what we do now, uh, we have a few barrels because there was the bags that were tied up on there. So we have them. Uh, I think there's three barrels out there, and we go down twice a month. We don't do it on our Monday, Friday routine you know, because it is such a distance and uh, yeah, normally there isn't very much waste at all so we can always let it go a couple weeks. If we see that there's a lot more usage then we can up the barrel runs. But Would you be in charge of replacing the bags? Like the supplies? Yes, the yeah. yeah. And we have their, their minimal fee. Okay. Yeah. And there again, I might go with something that we have, so we keep a, I, I like standardized, yep. so we'd probably go with our others. And I think that's pretty similar to what we have currently, so. Yeah, pretty close. They're all pretty close to it, but I, hopefully we can save some money if we work together there, or I don't know how that works, but if he'll raise the money, I think that's outstanding too. How quickly do you think you'll get started? Um, I was hoping to start fundraising for it on March 15th, and I hope to be done with it all by May 1st. And he's an overachiever. This doesn't have to be done for a year or so, isn't that right? Uh, until I turn 18. And See? Yeah, yeah, four years. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit off yeah. there. You told me that. Um, yes. Yeah, overachiever. I love it. Great ideas. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Since it's going in the parks. Do we, John, do you I would, need a motion? Yeah. He said he so? did. Yeah. Okay. Because I think it's a great presentation, great research. Thank you. And shared in the white Forward <laughs> with the proposal that Anson has presented to us uh, tonight for the two projects. Two I have trails. a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Nicely Thank done. You. Very nice, well. nice presentation. Hey, there should have been stipulations that he's a lifeguard for four years coming up next. <laughs> I'm not going to quit dogging you, Anson. Just right? met the fine young gentleman, and he's, he's a good boy. And we want guys like that. And we want girls, guys. We want them all. Uh, good job. Very good. Thank you for coming. And then just uh, reach out and we'll talk uh, whenever you get a chance. Reach out, communicate via email, phone, what have you, and we'll get together. And then I uh, think you need something signed and I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a director's report. Okay. Yeah, so mine's in big bold because I can need glasses too, John. You need one? help, John? Yeah, no. I, I, I even brought glasses, but they double print mine or whatever you do, make it real big so I can see. <laughs> Enlarge it. There you go. There it is. Anyway, I guess there is old, the only old business is we still have a project going on at the park restroom and the uh, uh, addition and it's going very well. Uh, Got to say that there's staying on pace. We'll be done. I, I think I, I'm not going to even give the early date. We're supposed to be done by July 1st, but it'll be well before then. Uh, can't looking very forward to it. Had a couple hiccups with the project, but uh, as far as that goes, uh, they've corrected the issues that we'd asked. We did have change orders that were approved by the Board of Works last meeting, and. Uh, uh, everything went well, so those are all taken care of. Uh, there again, we have water lines. Now we got to just do a few hookups. Uh, the roof's on. Now they'll start doing the interior work. Um, if that weather would have stayed like 50 degrees, we could have had this thing wrapped up in the next yeah. week or two, I think. Uh, but making a lot of good progress. Uh, we are now hiring for Seashore Water Park lifeguards. Uh, visit our website for application or stop into the park's office to pick up one uh, application. Uh, must be 15 years or older to apply. Uh, we just completed our first round of open interviews uh, two Saturdays ago. We'll be continuing our open interviews on uh, February the 15th from 10 to 3 at the park office. 
Also, we've teamed up with the YMCA on certifying our lifeguards for the summer. Uh, we had a gentleman from Martinsville that came down in the past to certify him, used our uh, Lebanon High School pool. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, gone uh, the next two summers, so the YMCA's teamed up, and I like that partnership. Uh, it's also uh, a lot cheaper than a lot of the other surrounding communities where we were getting certified before. Now, the way that works is we pay uh, for their recertification, but they uh, have that upfront cost to pay for their certification. That's a two-year certification. Then we will uh, train them in the following year for their CPR and get those updated. We like to have that done every year along with all, all our uh, training. Uh, there again, we had about 15 kids that came in uh, during the uh, last uh, open interview two weeks ago. Uh, nice turnout, we, nice, nice young, young kids. We still need uh, quite a few more, so uh, that will stay open. Have you yeah. all talked at all about doing online applications instead of having to do paper? Well, I, that's uh, part of it with the software. You'll be able to do a lot of things right now you can fill out an application on there. We kind of like to come in and let them, uh, you know, see. And most of the time, we can do an on-spot interview right there. Uh, but yes, uh, they can go online and fill it out. Uh, our newest new software that hopefully will be up and going by May should be able to take care of all that also. My thinking is that um, people think in terms of more online. You, you may entice more people I to agree. quickly do something like that. Yeah. And especially at this age group, they're all, man, they all have their laptops or whatever, their, their social media, everything in front of them. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. And yes, we, we do want to go that route. I think we have about 17, 18 openings, but we will hire 20, 25 if we can. So um, there again, a lot of people want to work concessions. We're filling up there. If we aren't full already, we really need lifeguards. You have to be 15. Um, to be a lifeguard, uh, 15 or above. Uh, there again, the YMCA, with their certification program, you have to be 16 years or older. So unfortunately, the kids that are not 16 yet will have to go to Zionsville. And uh, it, it's a little costly, but the uh, kids can pay their mom and dad back with their first paycheck that they earn. So that's what I tell them. Um, there again, Lori's been handling the interviews and doing an outstanding job, Lori Frost. Um, we have scheduled a maintenance walkthrough from our team in uh, New York. They're the ones that did the installation on all everything in the pump house for the wave pool. Uh, it hadn't really been serviced. We've kind of been servicing it over the past seven years. I just want their eyes on it and to go through everything. Um, we can't afford to have that pulled down, especially with the impact that we've had last, well, this last year alone. We can't afford to have it down. It is a little costly, uh, three to five thousand dollars probably, but I think uh, that's nothing to have them come in. New York will come in, those guys will come in, assess everything, uh, show us some tips on what we're doing, what we aren't doing right. Um, yes, we do have all the uh, literature on how to maintain, but I just want uh, other eyes on it. We had a couple <laughs> issues over the past two years. We were ever to, able to solve it within. Uh, we lost lost a day pool time on both of them, and I, I just want to avoid any issue we can. And with them being from New York, and in the spring, if anything would go down, it could be weeks, and we don't want that. So I think it's a, a tough price, but a good decision, good I think. Investment. Yeah. At six, seven years, everything starts breaking down. We painted the pool vessel last year. Um, also, the work that we're doing right now, we uh, went in the bathhouse. We've taken everything down, the dividers, all that. Um, we're repainting. We're redoing the floor. We had quite a few slip and falls in our restrooms. Uh, we're putting a skid coat on there, having that professionally done. We've done that uh, ourselves the past, well, ever since uh, the last 12 years since I've been there. Uh, that bathhouse is 1980, has never been updated or really worked on, so we're updating everything. Uh, quite an investment, but I think it uh, hopefully will save any accidents out there and also look a lot nicer. Uh, we have quite a few people from outside of the community and in the community, and we just want a nice product and something that looks good for them. And that progress is going. We're heating up the restrooms, so the paint 
adheres and everything. The guys are doing a great job. They've been working two shifts. Uh, you know, guys coming in the day and guys working at the night because when you put that much heat in the restroom you want to utilize all the heat and you don't want that heat coming out of the block so uh, the guys are nice enough to split up their shifts and work nights I think they'll be shoveling snow or spreading salt here uh, later this evening or early in the morning so it's nice to have different shifts um, there again you know, the Civic Rec software that we touched on just a second ago, uh, that should be up and going by May. Everything's going very smoothly. Uh, a lot of, lot of meetings, a lot of uh, hands-on. So uh, Taylor, Allison are heading that up along with Lori Frost. And uh, really excited about that. I think that's going to impact. A, uh, at least we'll be able to communicate and hit groups out there with what events we have going on. And the, the one thing I hear the most is, "Well, I didn't know about it. Didn't know." And hopefully, we can get to those people a little bit better. And uh, our website's just going to be awesome. Uh, excited to announce uh, the 2020 Daddy Daughter Dance Saturday, March 21st, from six to nine. Uh, snacks, dancing, and special appearances by Olaf and Elsa. And tickets are $20 a couple and $5 additional child. And tickets are on sale now at the park office. Already had quite a, quite a few people, so dads, get out there and get your tickets for your beautiful daughters there. Uh, we are also very excited to announce uh, we've teamed up with Let's Go Sports to provide new programs, tiny rackets, junior rackets, and lacrosse camp. Sessions will be held throughout our various parks. For more information, please visit our website or contact Park Office. Uh, Tiny Rackets has already filled up at least one group. They only take uh, certain uh, size groups so they can have better training. Real excited about that program. We did soccer shots the last couple of years. It's been very successful. This is also right down that aisle. I think uh, we're going to throw out lacrosse there and see what kind of uh, response we have. It isn't offered in the high schools, but uh, the athletic director, Phil Levine, said he'd be open to it on down the road. So uh, hopefully we can have some lacrosse going on at the uh, high school level at some point in time. But it's a nice entry. Um, the tennis uh, courts, we're going to be getting those, uh, both the Abner Longley Park and Memorial Park, uh, kind of a Band-Aid kind of cleaned up and uh, uh, so you can play on it and safe. Uh, putting um, four permanent um, what kind of uh, pickleball courts on both of them <laughs> with one full-sized tennis court so pickleball is such a big thing I think in our parks master plan they said how big it is um, and I had a lot of uh, a lot of people coming in the last couple of years that should be up and going this spring too so excited about that uh, the construction there again uh, pictures in the park with our new sign is going uh, very well on our, our sign what do you do is take a picture in the park send it to us and we'll put it up there if it's appropriate. And uh, there again, just send uh, the photos to our Facebook page and we'll post them as we come in each week and then we'll let you know when that picture's up so people can drive by and see their pictures on the they sign. just post the pictures on the Facebook page? On our Facebook page, yes, yes. Because I have some and I there you go. how to do that. Yeah. I've got some Santa and got several pictures I there you go I uh, some people have been sending home pictures and we really want them to deal with our park we'd love to put the others out there but we strictly want use in the park um, have some exciting things going on our, our uh, drainage plan and our topography are done looking into doing several projects uh, as Casey Sampson said earlier drainage is a big issue um, looking at lighting um, other than that we have stayed very busy this year. Uh, it seems like every year that I'm here, we're busier and busier. Anybody been in the office, they can see everybody's uh, uh, moving. So it's really good. Got a great crew uh, doing some very nice work. Well, we haven't even been able to tap into the uh, picnic tables. I think we only have a half of uh, the picnic tables. Normally we re rework those in the winter, but the weather's been so good, we're getting the outside work done. Obviously with this stuff now, um, we were out today and pre-saw or um, ice melt. We pre-salted all our trails in downtown. Um, we'll probably be out uh, 
uh, been speaking with the street commissioner. He was out too today uh, early. Got that out before the rush hour traffic at four o'clock, and sure enough, it did get a little slippery. We we'll communicate very well with them, and the police kind of contact us and let us know how the roads and streets are. And uh, we get out, do the sidewalks, all the paths, uh, all the way down to Patterson Street from the Memorial Park and downtown. And I think the guys are doing an outstanding job there. Haven't had to do it as much as past years, and that's okay for us that aren't making money for a living with it, huh, John? <laughs> But uh, as for thanks for reminding. I'm sorry. No, uh, there again, uh, the communication is very well throughout. So, uh, in fact, uh, Dave Newell and uh, uh, Craig Par or Craig uh, Hurst have both been talking to me. So they communicate. When they go out, we pretty well go out. So I think we'll probably be out four or three or four in the morning. Make sure everybody has a safe travel to their work. But. Take your time, uh, allow a little more time and a little more room in front of you and just drive with caution. Uh, there is a weather advisory out and I think we all know because you all came in tonight. Uh, just be careful out there. But uh, everything's moving very well. Uh, we're doing a lot of training, uh, inspections. Also, uh, if you remember, we had a metal slide at uh, uh, Abner Longley when we took that uh, splash pad. When we put it in, we took that slide out. We reworked it. Um, also, some donations from Central. They were removing some playground equipment, an old fire truck. Uh, boy, they've shined it up. That was part of their winter project. It looks great. That'll be um, installed this spring. Um, along oh, okay. with, it's going down at Abner Longley. Okay. Probably the fire truck will go closer to the, splad, the splash pad because of the age group. We'll try and keep it there. The slide will be pretty close to where it was. There's already one metal slide down there. Um, I think Billy Smith and Caleb Skank are both going to get their playground inspection uh, certification, which there's not many in the state uh, that do that. Uh, we do. It's always good to have a bunch of eyes on and know what we're doing. You've you got to remember, our playground equipment at Abner Longley is probably the newest park equipment, and it is 1980s. Uh, that means 1970s is when the other park equipment went in at Memorial Park. It's old. We're looking into the playground equipment. We do have one item that we did replace at Memorial Park, uh, which is the newest item, but it's seven years old already. And uh, that's that green big slide. Other than that, everything's 30 or 40 years old, which we really need to look into. Things are breaking down on it. Uh, we're constantly fixing and making sure it's safe for the patrons. And uh, that's just something that's uh, another priority for us. We got a lot of needs, and uh, so we're hitting them, knocking them off as best we can. Um, there again, just following the uh, uh, parks master plan as best we can, and go down the list. Are we still doing the um, adult <clears throat> exercise equipment? Yes, that'll be going in this spring too. That'll be going in at Memorial Park. See how it works, and if we need, uh, move it on down to move some down at Abner. Uh, we'll probably be working on the basketball courts at Abner Longley too. Those those uh, uh, goals will probably go with gorilla goals where they're easier uh, to move up and down and we can lock them out. But they, they need a better basketball goal. Some of them are eight foot and they've been vandalized a little bit. We keep them up as best we can, but they're old and they, they need fixed up. And uh, uh, there's a lot of, lot of people playing on that on a nightly. So parks were packed this 50 60 degree yeah, weather I, I, I'd swear we'd have a couple hundred 300 people in the parks this weekend which is great but uh, it's early <laughs> yeah it is and unfortunately we don't have any restrooms but uh, coming soon a heated restroom which is great at Memorial Park yeah I'm real excited about that really am um, obviously we'll have to keep track of it every but uh, uh, it's looking really good. The guys are doing very nice work on it. Um, actually, if we get some warm weather, they'll put the cobblestone up at the front and uh, over the very front entrance of the bathroom, and I think you'll really like it. It should look sharp. Um, there again, uh, moving along, had a lot of help with, uh, uh, there again, the bike uh, uh, um, out at the landfill. We had that meeting the other night. Um, there again, some of the workers and quite a few, I, I'd say probably 20 volunteers and people that are uh, right in the biking came out. We drove around the landfill to try and lay out kind of where the bike trail will go. 
and then turn around and uh, laid it out. There's areas we obviously don't want to go. Had a meeting with 60 people that showed up that night. A long day. Um, yeah, got the gator stuck a couple, three times out there. We had five or five of our gators out there, um, but a really nice turnout, and we'll see where that goes. We still have quite a few hoops to jump through, but uh, a lot of interest, a lot of out of state people, a lot of out of out of the city people. But uh, I, I think it'll be nice if we can tie that and also tie in the trail then that will be able to access there so that's some of the things we're working on nothing's in stone yet but we're looking at it and Kevin Krulik and Ben Ben Bonatrager are looking into it and moving it along is there anything coming up soon regarding the conservation club there really isn't um, uh, there isn't anything we we need monies to do a lot of things uh, I'd love to put some docks in out there and obviously building and facility would be nice but uh, that's something that we'll probably have conversations with the council to see how funding and all that goes. And there again, we are looking at a grant um, uh, that hopefully will help with this process. Um, but that's where we are. Everything, everything's moving along good. Um, can't say enough about the girls in the office, Lori and uh, Taylor and Allison. Um, Allison had her baby boy. I think we all knew that. And. Uh, Taylor's expecting, so that's uh, in June. Uh, we have an intern on already uh, scheduled or, or signed on for this summer. Really excited about that to help out when Taylor's uh, leave for maternity. Um, there again, everything seems to be moving well. Uh, just busy for a February. <laughs> it's crazy. Is there a timeline for the <clears throat> scouts um, work that they're going to do at the dog park? Uh, no, John asked me that a couple of days ago. I haven't heard back from the girls. I think they were talking March or April, if I wasn't oh, mistaken. The, the thing is, with their grant process, they have 60 days. Once they start it, they have 60 days to get it. If they yeah, don't get the money in 60, the, the grant goes away. Yeah. So they got to be really organized. I think they're going to reach out and, and have another meeting with them, or um, you know, we'll make sure that hopefully they can get that money. Uh, John did some nice work on uh, pro bono work there on uh, laying out things and giving them ideas, and I think it looked really sharp down there. Um, we do have a lot of dirt stored in that uh, parking lot down there. We did it to move the project along. Uh, we will be, they will be removing that dirt. It was just easier than going all the way to Kokomo with 100 loads of uh, stone from our parking area. And thank goodness we have that paved. It's, yeah, the, the guys are, I can't tell you how great that is. I think health-wise and everything else, that dust had come up and you couldn't keep anything clean. Um, we did just purchase a new tractor. We traded in an old uh, 2005 for a new John Deere. Uh, that's been very helpful. It'll be helpful along. Um, uh, traded in a couple mowers. Uh, we're in a rotation for mowers. We have five mowers, and we traded in two 72-inch uh, Toros for two others. Our equipment's in great shape. Uh, Caleb Skink takes care of it and does a real nice job. But um, as far as that, that's I've talked long enough. I think. <laughs> Any other questions or anything? We have a meeting Thursday. I think that's an important meeting with the council. It's nice that we all get to sit down and uh, talk through some of these projects and find out how we'll fund them. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Usually you do an excellent job, John. They do. Everybody at the park, they're hardworking and caring. That's great. Okay, has everybody had a chance to look at the claims? If so, I'd entertain a motion to approve the claims. Make a motion we approve the claims. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. There's nothing else to come before the board. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for joining us this evening, and everyone be safe out there. <laughs>